In today's video, we got some of the easiest wins I've ever gotten in my entire life. And it's not what you would expect. All right, guys, a couple of things before we jump into it. I'm a little under the weather today for these intros and outros. I apologize. Um, I'm recording these in the future. So uh, today I'm not feeling so great, but I am on some day quill. Hopefully I can get through this pretty well. Uh, but uh, today was very weird. <laughs> it was very weird. I want to preface this video before we get started that I got a lot of strange wins today. Um, a lot of missed lethals on the opponent's end, a lot of early concedes, a lot of strange concedes where games were close and they just jumped out early. I don't know what was going on today. I don't know what was in the water. Um, I still wanted to show the video because I thought this deck was really cool. And some of the wins were pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna show you guys this video anyways, but as we all know, green is not like the strongest right now. It's not in the best position, but I feel like when you turbo ramp, it's pretty darn good. We've got ourselves a pretty strong start here with the Analyst into a Bloomkin. One of these is going to be our two drops here. Analyst is going to ramp us massively because we're going to be sacking lands here early, hopefully getting them into the graveyard. And then with the mill, we're also going to be pulling some lands in and then hitting a big, big, uh, you know, ramp on turn four. We've also got the Bloomkin. Like I said, it's going to grow with the size of the lands that are on the field. And then we've also got more ramp with the Archdruge Charm and Stomper. Charm being a little bit more of a flexi play though, which is nice removal of finding lands also finding creatures if you need and in a tortoise so there's a lot of ramp happening here so of course not only with the bloomkin getting bigger we also need some other big spells we're going to be finishing the game out with things like nissa and awaken the woods to go absolutely massive not to mention the dryads on this are going to also pump up your bloomkin and um, attribute to the nissa's minus seven alt and then of course on the top end i threw in some cityscape leveler and portal to phyrexia as some big bombs at the end of the game for some removal um but guys again deck was super fun uh, any Anybody out there who's already typing in the comments, you know, get your MMR up, whatever. I'm 95% mythic. I never went on a big tanking dive on losses or anything. So I don't know what the matchup system was like today, but I'll take it. I had definitely been given a gift in today's video and uh, I'm excited to show you guys. <laughs> Enjoy the nonsense. Let's go. All right, guys, today we're trying some mono green ramp and I am super excited about it because I haven't played mono green in a long, long time. And uh, I thought it'd be pretty fun today, man. There's a uh, the analyst is a card I've been I've been having so much fun with, and I, I just wanted to try it out today and see if if it was relevant in mono green. We got awaken the woods Nissa as kind of our win con. All right, looks like the opponent took a mulligan. Here we go. And we've got the Flourishing Bloomkin on two here, which is great. It's going to get absolutely massive, especially when paired with Awaken the Woods. If I'm not mistaken, because Awaken Woods does trigger the same with uh, Nissa, So uh, I would imagine... Oh, I forgot it has Disguise, huh? Cost three to disguise it. Um, anyways, uh, I would imagine it works because Awaken the Woods works with the Nissa's alt. So they are worded exactly the same way. Mono Red is not ideal. It's not necessarily bad either, though. Sure. Oh, that's a good find. That kind of opens up um, the Archdruge Charm for us a little bit here because I can blow up the Kamano instead of going to look for a land, which is what I was going to do. That way our Blossoming Tortoise can come down and get the job done for us. Menace, whenever each player upkeep, Punisher deals two damage to that player unless they control two or more basics. I have two basics. Let's go. Well, that worked out good. All right. The opponent unable to attack, really. Let's go. This is going extremely well. <laughs> what, a, what a card to have against us. We, of course, choose the one that's going to gain us life every time and thin out our deck a little bit from... You know, giving us better top decks. Uh, no attacks. We've officially gone to the realm where the bloom can cannot be touched by mono red, unless of course they have the um, uh, the fury. Is it the fury? I forget the name of the card. Yeah, there's one card that deals five damage. Aside from that, frenzy. I think is what it's called. Frenzy. Needless to say, please don't have a frenzy. Uh, 
Raiju, I can live with that. That's totally fine. They send it, really? Really? Yeah, I would imagine they're gonna scoop here after this attack once they've realized they've lost two of their creatures and I still have my two standing. They're definitely not gonna wanna continue this match, I would imagine. All right, they're still here. Let's start with an attack with this. Get our Cabaretti Courtyard going. How about, uh, oh, Bloomkin, uh, let's, let's put it face down for funsies. <laughs> Let's put it face down so we can do a little bit more ramping. And then it costs five to flip. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. And we'll flip it over. We'll get two more lands and then attack in for a crazy amount of damage. The opponent cannot get through our defenses here. One card left in hand too. Not great. Uh, and there's nothing for them to bring back with the adversary. Everything's going perfectly for us right now. You better get your defensive gauge ready to go because you are done with the offense, my friend. If they, if they full send, it's essentially a concede at this point, right? They've got to play defense. Yeah, there it is. GG's. Mono Red said defense? Me? Yeah, right. I'm out of here. <laughs> good game. Okay, our opening hand here looks really, really good. We're going to keep this. Got the analyst here on too. And uh, enough lands hopefully to get it. Get it sacrificed. Oh no. Oh no, that's bad. Reveals their hand, you choose an artifact or creature card from it. That's a bummer. Okay, that's a good find. That will help us a little bit with the uh, terrible mill that the analyst decided to get us. Sure. Sure thing. All right, my turn. Come on, Tortoise, get us some good stuff here. We've got the Titanius Command too, which is great. That'll help us out a little bit. Four, five, six. We need one more land. The Tortoise is definitely dead. Yeah, no, no surprise there. Surprised they used the end on the Tortoise though and not the leveler. All right, we find a land, but not the one we wanted to see here. I think I am gonna play this for the five. It's not great, but good enough and that's it nice and easy the opponent just ran out of answers i guess it was just too much pressure i don't know but either way we'll take it good game all right looks like the opening hand here looks really good we're gonna keep it we definitely should be able to find a third land drop here you would think got the bloomkin on two into some ramp can't be mad at that Here we go. Cabaretti Courtyard, grab me that land. Please, please, please let me ta top deck a third land here and then we will be good to go. That's actually not terrible. I'll take that over the Bloomkin, I think. Oh yeah, there we go. A lot of good lands that'll come in and gain me life. We see Rakdos colors though. This opponent taking a little bit of time here. Uh, Field of Ruins not going to help them at all against us. They do get a cut down though. That is pretty brutal. I won't lie. That is pretty brutal. Yikes. And we missed our third land drop because we milled all of them off the top with the analyst. Feels bad, man. Bloomkin is susceptible to another cut down. I hope they don't have two of those. It's probably virtue of persistence. Let's be real. Okay. Yikes. Where are the lands? Not good. Not good. Not good. <laughs> Every time I open the graveyard to see three of them in there, I'm like, oh, really wish I had those. All right, they get a treasure and they get to draw a card. They are out ramping us at the moment. There we go. Now we're talking. 
Now we're talking right back into the game here. Portal to Phyrexia will be really nice. It looks like they want to utilize their graveyard with the blitz mechanic, so stealing things will be nice. Hopefully those are just lands. All right, we do know that we are absolutely going to get a land here because there's a bunch in the graveyard. All right. Four, five, six. Okay, so if we get to six lands here, we play the Titanius Command, we can ramp our way into a portal, which is kind of what I want to do here. Uh, they're definitely going to drop the dragon at some point here too, which is going to give them the treasures they need to play the cards that they stole from me because we only run green creatures and lands and whatever. Oh, duress is brutal. They get to take their pick here. Yeah, they take the Nissa. Pretty good pick. And another Decadent Dragon. They already played a land this turn, so they might hit a land, but we won't know until next turn. We play this. Library and... Let's do two creatures. Uh, let's go you and you. All right, this puts us in a position where we can attack with the Stomper now too, which is super helpful. That's why we kind of went with the Titania's lands there. That Not only to ramp into the portal, which is nice, but it also activates the uh, Stomper for us. All right, let's just start taking some of these fours here. All right, they still haven't played a single forest from our cards, which means they probably drew four actual threats and cards that do things. Okay. Easy portal for us here. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. The opponent does have two swamps ready to go though, so. Okay, they bargain. Nice, not bad. They get to gain life. Um, According to the amount of mana, that's pretty solid. It's pretty solid, man. Only a couple more forests left in the deck before we run out, which is totally fine. We kind of want to run out, so our top decks are amazing, you know? I know I took a basic land in that somewhere. I, my brain just told me to take it. I don't know why, but it was not the right call. I should have kept with the broker's hideouts and stuff. <sighs> Deadly cover up. Oh, pretty smart because now they just ate up their entire gr uh, graveyard in order to stop me from getting a good portal. Taking out my cityscape leveler is tough. I mean, Bloomkin's gonna absolutely be massive. So I think that's, I think that's gotta be the play, right? It's gotta be the play. And then portal number two. All right, so now every single time we're gonna have to force them into a situation where they need either a sweeper or two kill spells every single turn. Otherwise we just keep reanimating and we keep re-upping on the, uh, the threats here. Totally fine. Uh, can I? Oh, I should have sacked that before they got it from us. Um, Stomper and Deccan and Dragon. Land. Broker's hideout. Okay, and Bloomkin seems pretty good. Let's sack this for green mana so that way uh, we can get it back. Next turn, we still have eight. So if they minus with Vraska here, we still have eight to go to the face. So they're gonna need a couple of kill spells, which we don't have any for them to use. If they have a sweeper, I don't wanna overcommit with the stomper. So I think we're good to just pass the turn here. They haven't used a single card we've given them, which is very, very odd. 
And Vraska goes for a plus here, which means they probably have the sweeper. Oh no, they just go multiverse here, huh? Which means they're going to go with the Nissa and ooh, an Olivia. But then Olivia brings back what? A Shieldred as they are attacking. We allow the damage to get through and we win. So Olivia is not great. They might just bring back the Shieldred and my Nissa. They do bring back Olivia. Very strange because again, Olivia is going to bring back the Shieldred attacking and they're going to need a blocker. Not much of an attacker. Okay, so what if we do this? We just win the game, right? Yeah, let's just win the game here. GG's, let's go! <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. A nice little slow reanimation deck is exactly what we need to win uh, these games. Okay, let's go. This hand looks really, really good. And somehow we've avoided uh, Boros this entire time, right? I feel like we haven't seen it yet, right? We had Mono Red, which we did pretty good against, actually. Either way, we get to go first here. I got to wake in the woods. If we do go against Boros, this would be a, a good time to do it because we've got a really good hand for it. So got the early analyst, a lot of life gain on the lands, awaken the woods for a wide board of threats. So here we go. Here we go. Forest. Force number two. We do need to get at least one more land in order to curve this analyst out perfectly. That was a massive hit for us right there. Love it. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. You have so much better things to do than to kill it. Come on. Surely, surely not. Okay, Spirited Companion. Okay, so Selesnia Enchants. Another deck that I think that we match up against pretty well. I feel like we match up against a lot of things pretty well, if I'm being honest. Just really not aggro. And even aggro, you know, it's not that scary if it's mono reddish, but like Boros just moves really fast. Jukai Naturalist right into a turn or a two mana. Ossification. Yikes. Okay, well, that's a huge, huge bummer. <laughs> Can't even lie to you guys, that one hurt a little bit. But I can blow it up, which is pretty cool. Which will be my intention uh, next turn. Gosh, though, how do I miss a land drop there? We miss, we've been missing a lot of land drops for a 26 land deck. Uh, let's just pass the turn. We'll Druid Charm. We'll Druid Charm, uh, destroy the Ossification. And then uh, hopefully top deck the land we need. But I don't see if I have a battle for draw card. Okay, so I think we'll start though by doing this. That'll take away any of the mana ramp that they have here, and they don't get the card off the audacity. So I think that's pretty good. A little bit of an audible throne there. Perfect. Perfection. Tilda. Sure, sure. That's actually a lot of mana invested into a play that's not going to immediately help them. So we'll uh, we'll wait and see here. Audacity is pretty tough. I will say that's that's going to hurt a bit. Okay, so we will go exile you. Drops the Katilda's power down a little bit. Allows me to chump block. Okay. And just unfortunately going to have to pass the turn here. Do a little chump blocking again. Sacrifice it. Get back a bunch of lands. And then we'll go with the uh, Cityscape Leveler. Because, I mean, we've got to have at least four lands in here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six lands. That'll put us at ten mana. Ten mana this next turn. We just got to survive. It, it all comes down to that last card in their hand. Is it something crazy like a Machiko? That would be pretty bad if it was. Here we go. 
We gained some life though off of these uh, sack lands, which is great. If we draw into a portal to Phyrexia, that would be next level. That would be next level, dude. No way, dude. Are you kidding me? Why would you scoop there? Why would you scoop there? That actually makes me really mad because that this was still anybody's game, man. This was still anybody's game because let's say I resort to having to play a cityscape level where we blow up the Katilda. The Katilda goes, uh, you know, to the graveyard. They can attach that Katilda now to one of their creatures giving it flying and I'm screwed. So I would have had to come up with a pretty creative way to win that turn. We probably would have had gone with a big awake in the woods. Why would they just concede there? That's so weak. <laughs> that is so weak, dude. I really just want to know what this top deck would have been. Lame. Oh, man, I'm all about a good win, but not not like that. That was that was bad. We probably would have lost that game if they didn't concede. I, they conceded way too early. People seeing the um, the sacrifice on the analyst, they think the game's just over. And I get it. Sometimes when you see like the analyst paired up with the Nissa, I mean, I've seen it before, and it's. It gets you that basically that infinite loop of mana where you get the lands down and then they get double the lands. It's really frustrating because then it leads into some crazy combos, but I am mono green. Like just see where it leads, you know? See where see where it would have taken us. Alright, we got the bloomkin down. It's probably gonna die to a cut down. Invasion of Gobacon. Sure. Gonna make something a little bit more expensive. Probably the Stomper. Yep. No surprise there. Imagine we draw into another Stomper. That'd be pretty nice. Or a Charm. Good news is they're not, they're not attacking with that Snail and anything here. What is this? Um, excavation, one mana enchantment. Return target permanent control to uh, its owner's hand. If it is on Earth, and instead exile it, then return the card to its owner's hand. Activate. Okay, that's very strange. I have no idea what they plan on doing with that, but don't really want to find out. Uh, this might be a mistake attacking in here because they might kill the uh, analyst, and then if they do, skull cap gets in. Not that it matters. One. One battle token off of the invasion isn't the worst thing in the world. What you got for me, space gerbil? Okay, I thought the opponent was going to rope us out there for a second. Um, I unfortunately have to give up my other land here, which is not great. Not great at all. That works. That works. Let's go ahead and send in the Bloomkin again. Hopefully they don't have any more discard, but you know they probably do. Let's be real. Hopefully they don't take the entire rope this time to decide their turn. Okay, they play out a card. Exile target creature. Oh, they choose the wrong creature. Love it. Love it. That's huge. Okay, so they're probably going to give the flying obviously to the snail, get over the top, and then flip the Gobicon, or they're just going to let me kill it. I don't, I don't quite understand the opponent here. They're definitely doing it because of this, and I get that, but that seems kind of odd. Seems kind of odd and roundabout to do it that way, but whatever. My my opponent today. I know. I every time this happens to me too, when I get a video and and people are. You know watching and they think that my opponents are not playing optimally they love to to love to give me a hard time for that like it's my fault <laughs> so i try i i always get a little upset too now that i'm like why can't they match me against people that are uh you know ideally playing their hands but uh return permanent to owner's hand sure okay so that just goes to exile forever that's pretty cool that's a pretty cool little thing they got going on can this hit anything? 
Just creatures, okay. So the portal's good to go. Six, seven, eight. Okay, we're very close to being able to do the portal. Not quite there yet though. And there's the scoop. Uh, we did just draw the nuts too. I mean, Nissa was gonna blow up their ability to keep returning these things to their hand, so. GG, I guess. All right, this hand looks pretty good. Got a lot of ramp. Um, we did just quote unquote play another round. Uh, I say play because in quotes because they scooped instantly after taking three mulligans. So guys, I don't know what's going on today. I want to be honest with you. This does not happen to me every day or even close to every day. <laughs> this is a very rare occasion. I'd love to get you guys like some really good games here, but it just seems like nobody wants to play today. Last night, I couldn't pay for a win. Like last night I was up to 130 trying to build decks and I could not pay for a win. Uh, granted, my decks were probably not that good. <laughs> we were trying to figure some stuff out, but um, man, today is a very, very big difference in opponents and the feel. I just cannot believe we just played another game and the opponent just left before the game started. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. And it was somebody 97% and then we get another 88. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So we're playing humans, obviously, but uh, is it five colors or is it just strictly Naya? That's the question I have. I'd love to get the Awaken the Woods going and the Nissa at some point. We haven't done that once yet. Maybe we go with the tortoise next turn into the Awaken the Woods. Or actually, Awaken the Woods would turn on the Stomper, wouldn't it? Let's see. Two, three. Yeah, it would definitely turn the Stomper on. Maybe we should just go that route. That way we can block. Yeah, that's probably the move, huh? All right, Awaken the Woods for three. Stomper's online. I've got a couple of extra blockers if I need. I could use another on tap land here, would be great. So that way I can maybe get the Stomper and then two of my Druids or Dryads uh, a pump from Nyssa, but I could just drop Nyssa though and Minus right away on the Urbrask's Forge. That's something I could do too. There's a lot of play lines I can take here. And being a humans deck, the Nissa tokens are going to be big enough that I don't think they're going to be able to combat with those very much unless they're running uh, like Brutal Cathar or something. Torch the Witness deals tw uh, twice X damage to target creature of excess damage is dealt this way creature. Okay, so investigate. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so we play this. Do we play the Nissa? I think we do. So we just drew a second Nissa. I think that actually answers my question. I think we play the Nissa. And we go for the minus on the Erebrask's Forge. And now they don't have a very good attack into Nissa. They might have more burn spells or removal spells for the Nissa, but I've got a backup option for us. And uh six seven eight nine right now everything gets minus or get they get plus nine nine if i nissa alt i might i might get a little greedy here though guys i might stick around for another turn or two just to kind of build up the mana a little bit more i don't think i can necessarily win yet you know poison dart frog is mana and it gets death touch I'll block. I'll block and I'll do one of these. Do one of these. Stin out the deck a little bit more, gain some life. Now, I, I really don't see how our opponent here has any chance of winning this game at this point, but you never know. You never know. Plus the Dryads are getting the pump from the Tortoises, which is a really nice passive ability that you don't think about a whole lot when you're running the Tortoise. But when you 
teaming up with the wake in the woods it's pretty busted they better do some damage to the nissa because i'm gonna alt it but little do they know oh little do they know i'd rather use this nissa to alt so i can uh do a big awaken the woods looks like they're conceding here i mean i get it we didn't get to pop off and do our thing, but they knew it was coming. So I don't blame this opponent for leaving this time. This was definitely not uh, the wrong choice. All right, guys, we're we're flying, man. We're flying through the ladder right now. I get another another 87 matchup. I'm at 96, so I'm surprised that we're seeing so many 87s and 86s in a row. All the all the players in the higher rank uh, percentages are the ones that are being weird, though, and conceding instantly. So I don't know, man. I'm probably going to put the Bloomkin face down here. The analyst didn't hit very good there on the uh, the milling. I did get two cityscape levelers, which is pretty cool, but... Oh, but I got a second one, actually. Let's try a second one see if we get lucky. Give me a couple of sack lands. Yes. Okay. Got one sack land. <clears throat> Three lands in total. Putting us at seven already next turn, which is pretty bananas. Shieldred's Edict is solid. Um, okay. Didn't expect to see a Vran in this build, but there it is. All right, so we pass the turn. We do a little block uh, sack of the Analyst and get those three lands back on the field, putting us at seven, and then hopefully we top deck a land to get into a cityscape leveler. And then from there, I really don't see what they can do. I mean, they've got obviously some removal in hand here, so let's... Let's not get too excited. They might be able to answer the cityscape leveler pretty easily. You never know. But I mean, I follow that up with the portal. So against life gain, I think that's pretty darn good. Oh, no. Oh, no. That exiles our entire graveyard. That's pretty good. That's not pretty good. That's really good. That's really good. All right, there goes the graveyard. I've gotten really good at timing my clicks. <laughs> so the uh, the imagery of the, the lands don't even pop up. I just click and it goes onto the battlefield. Three and then four. So if I play this, I need one more land. Gosh darn it. Okay, let's just do Bloomkin here. And then we got the ability to fight. We'll probably do that. This though can sack itself to give humans hexproof and indestructibility. That's really good. Maybe that's where we got to fight. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm going to pass the turn here. I've got a 7-7 seven, seven on the field. Pretty difficult to get through that. I'm sure they've got a kill spell, though. If they do, I'll just... On the way out, I'll try to fight the... Uh, Drina. Okay, so I'm starting to see... Starting to see their combo building here. Okay, so I do have to fight that. Dang, that's super unfortunate. That's super unfortunate. We got to kill the Drina. Drina? 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 Rata Drawbick, making my life hard. So if I let the Rata Drawbick resolve, guys, here's the thing. I could obviously fight the Rata Drawbick instead, but then this would just sack itself to protect it with Hexproof and then, you know, get a copy of itself again. So we got to take away their ability to constantly just protect their things. Now I can kind of, you know, have a little bit more, uh, more fun here. The opponent, though, it's going to be tricky, man, because that Rata Drawbick, when I kill something, it's just going to create copies of it, like, like so. Really hope we get a land here. A portal would be phenomenal. Not a portal. Okay. I can't touch this because of the ward too. We might have to just kill this. Or we can go with the turtle and get a land that way and look to do the portal next turn. Turtle can block. 
If they have removal though, that's lethal. Yeah, I gotta go with this. I can't I can't afford to die. To the nonsense. Um Can't touch this. If I hit this, I take three. I'm gonna go here. Cause the Vran the Vran being able to ping us for damage just for us, you know, killing things passively or them killing their own things, that can add up, especially when we're at seven. I think getting rid of that's probably the best idea. We got ourselves a game here though, guys. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I needed. Last card in hand is a playable, it looks like. Oh no, helping hand brings back the brand. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. The good news is, wait, why? Oh, because they're just going to ping us for two? I mean, sure, I guess. The good news is my portal will um, allow me to bring back something from their graveyard that gains me life, potentially. That's kind of what I need right now. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Shoot, what do we do here? Uh, I think we just go... I think we go 1-1 one, one counter, fight this. This is brutal, man. I pay the ward too. Okay, be done with that, finally. <sighs> yikes, man. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay, and then we attack. We blow up this, but then if that happens, they just ping it... Or they uh, attack us back for five. I have to leave my... I think we're just dead here. I think we're just dead here. Yeah, there's really nothing I can do. Nothing I can do. That was the best I could have done. I, I, it's, it's simply because I missed the land drop there. I mean, if I could have got the portal down two turns ago when I wanted to, we would have won this game, but missed out. Missed out, and uh, because of that, we are now dead. I'm hoping they think maybe we have another instant speed. Druid's Charm and they don't attack? I don't know. There's nothing I could do. They win the game here. They just gotta send all. What? Okay, they miss lethal? <laughs> they miss lethal? Ain't no way they just gave me the game, right? I mean, we'll see. I'm taking two for this. I'm taking two for this, and then I attack and kill their last creature. Are any of these creature lands? No. I think I just won the game. If they had attacked with everything there, they would have won the game. And obviously, they didn't realize that. Guys, I don't know. I don't know. Is mono green that good or did we just get so beyond lucky? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look to <laughs> look to gain some life for sure. Oh, another life gain mechanic. Gain some life there. Gain some life again. I don't know, guys. If my opponents want to keep missing lethal, by all means, keep missing lethal, man. All right, just don't draw a kill spell because there's still a chance they might be able to sneak something through here. I don't think so, though. If they do a kill spell, my Vran... Gains me a little bit of life. Game over. Game, set, match. Now they send all when they're going to lose. <laughs> I'm the best. You know what? I think it's simply because I'm the best. <laughs> God, I'm so lucky sometimes.
that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it very much. I hope you enjoyed today's deck list. I absolutely love me some mono green whenever I get a chance to play it. So a lot of fun today to do some turbo ramping. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that it ended. Uh, a lot of these games ended the way they did. It would have been a little more exciting to see some of them played through. Some of them were nail biters and some of them were, you know, games I should have lost. But, um, you know, nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the deck seemed pretty darn good, too, for what it was. And uh, mono green not being in the greatest spot right now, but still feeling pretty good if you want to turbo ramp out so hope you guys get some value out of this video and a uh, huge thank you to everyone who made it this far and a uh, huge thank you and shout out of course to the mardu mob if you guys don't know the mardu mob is the membership program on this channel huge shout out to the people who uh, help support me monetarily every single month it means a lot to me i appreciate it very much and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day peace out Hit him three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah. Ooh. FTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh. Man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks, but the meta. This ain't cheap.